Hi, I'm Curry from Boris 2D and today we're going to make this step stool plant shelf thingy. I obtained a couple of pellets from a nearby construction site and spent an hour or so freeing the slats that were in good enough shape to use. Most of these turned out to be warped and bent, but since I was going for a rustic look, that wasn't much of a problem. The pellet had four thick slats, and I cut them all to an identical size. I also cut a 15 degree angle at their ends, making sure that the cuts were parallel on the same slats. Since I don't have a crowbar, I ended up breaking a lot of the slats, and I ended up with a bunch of short pieces. I took a couple of these, cut them to size, cut angles, and used them to hold the legs together. I used a nail gun and glue to hold everything together, and even though the surfaces were not completely flat, it worked out just fine. The main structure of the shelf was finished. I measured about halfway up the legs and marked the spot where a shelf would sit. I made the same marking on the adjacent leg and using this mark I drew a line on the inside of the legs, trying to be as square as possible. Using the spirit level to make sure that the line was as parallel as possible to the ground, I drew another line on the opposite legs. I measured how large the shelf would have to be to fit snugly and marked one of the long thin slats that I was going to use for the shelf. I cut it down to size and then used it as a template to cut others. I cut several of these short pieces and laid them out in the way they were going to be used. I used glue and nails to hold the shape together. The nails and nail holes really blend well into the general aesthetic, so I was going for a rough and rustic look. Unfortunately, my nail gun doesn't drive nails all the way through, even at full power, so I had to knock them in using a hammer. This isn't a big deal, as I said, dents and notches blend in with the looks of the project, but for future use I think I'd rather hammer the nails in by hand, as this ended up being more of a waste of time. While I'm doing that, let me tell you about my website. It has blog posts about projects which you've seen here on my channel, some tips and information that I would like to share with you, as well as some personal experiences while venturing in the world of making. There are also links to all my social media pages. Go check it out, borscht.net. Once the shelf was done, I used a block plane to chamfer the edges. Even though I was going for a rustic look, I did not want any sharp edges with splinters poking out. One of the things that I really enjoy while working on a project is problem solving. The next step to finish the shelf was to sand it so as to knock off any proud splinters and make it safe to handle. The problem was that doing this with one hand while holding the shelf down with the other was awkward. I improvised by drilling a couple of dog holes in the bench, supported by a 2x4 piece of wood underneath. I used a couple of thick dowels to stop the piece from sliding away from me, and I made sure to countersink the holes so that the dowels slide in easily. With this done, I used the hand and block planes to take out the bulk of the splinters that were poking out. 
I also took the time to chamfer the inner edges in between slats to match the outside edge aesthetic. I spent a good hour sanding the piece with 90 grit sandpaper followed by a quick pass with the 120 grit so as to not smooth it too much. I drilled a hole in one of the legs, just below the mark I made earlier. I was going to use dowels to hold the shelf up and made sure to make the holes only halfway deep. I filled the holes with glue and squeezed the dowels in, clamping them till the glue set. I repeated this on the adjacent leg, doing my best to keep it level. With the shelf resting on these two dowels, I could pivot it up and down and mark exactly where the opposite dowels needed to go. I tried using a spirit level to do this, but it was a bit awkward. If I were to do it again, I would probably mark and drill the holes before I put the legs together. I used a digital protractor to find the angle of the legs incline, and set my miter so to cut a bevel of the same angle. I cut a bevel on several short pieces of wood to serve as the bottom of the planter at the top of the structure. I glued these pieces of wood along the cut, knowing full well that this would not hold on its own. I put wood glue along a dowel with a drop of CA glue in the middle, then pressed it in the corner between the front panel and the bottom of the planter. I did this for all the slats on both sides. The bottom was essentially becoming a permanent shelf. I was still not convinced of its rigidity, especially if it's going to hold soy, so I decided to shoot a nail in the dowel just for good measure. With this, the build was completed and started the long and arduous task of sanding with 90 grit sandpaper. I only have this tiny delta sander in my shop, so I sanded and sanded and sanded until there were no more splinters poking out. This was followed by a couple coats of varnish to protect it from the weather and the project was complete. Here's the finished project using only one pallet. Pallet is extremely useful. First of all, it's free, so that's extremely convenient. But secondly, all the nail holes and all the rough and weathered looks blend into a rustic appearance, making it sort of fit in with the whole motif. The shelf in the middle over here is quite sturdy. There are some pots on it over here, as you can see, and it's holding up pretty well. Instead of a cubby, the top is used as a planter. There's a plastic lining around it and underneath and there's soil in it so that my father can grow plants in it over here. It's quite a nifty idea, it was a bit of a last minute but I think it came out well. If you enjoyed this video click the like button and subscribe for more videos. Visit borchardy.net for links to all my social media pages as well as more information on the projects that I carry out. Just as I have been inspired by other makers out there to go and make something of that you too, go make something because everyone is a maker. Thank you.